He could be natural and excited, encourage the youth, the photographs, the sharing, the love, take a ride in that Thunderbird, like the one his father owned back in 1980, break down the sweater, the shirt, only a thin t-shirt, penetrable by the awakened bond, useless and misguided, was dying. Heterosexism was alive in America. Homophobia was dying in will. Hypocrisy crept in when he was not on, and he could do nothing to change that. There were people who met him and would never associate with him again. That's life. Raccoon, his cat, knew him for true. He danced for her before the large felt speakers, spoke to her in his madness. The tonality in his voice expressed more than the words themselves, the emotional planes. He could not tolerate that life settled on him. He grew restless and more reclusive. There were faces in coffee houses he had seen before, and they had groups. They were static and not so happy, some of them. Others acted very happy or espoused neuroses. The latter were those with whom he held company, for he found them never dull and thoughtful, sensitive enough to have been affected by the city, by the world in a genuine way. With eccentricities shook into them by tenures of clouds that sped over the lake and were abandoned by the winds and formed groups they were static in. So static, they made lightning for the sun-deprived masses in the streets of Chicago. He couldn't tolerate it, but he did just the same. Because toleration is good for the soul and built many a great character and thrashed the pioneer.